guys welcome back to the hot heel girl podcast today we are interviewing jennifer schwartz and she is the founder of the think fit be fit podcast network she's a master level muscle activation techniques rx full body specialist strength and conditioning coach serving active people and athletes and she's also a dog mom fellow dog mom here so (laughs) love that so welcome to the show jennifer Thank you for having me. And yeah, that was one of the things that drew me to the podcast was like <laughs> your channel. And like, I was like, I like the way she dog moms. <laughs> I, yeah. My, I, sometimes I feel like my Instagram is 80% my dogs. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to upload like informational stuff to Instagram stories the other day and it was just crashing on every single one. And then I just posted a picture of my dog and it's like, cool. So I'm like, okay, obviously that's, it's just that's what the people want for the dog it's telling content. you what the people want, <laughs> I guess. Yes. But yeah. yeah. So, um, like I was saying before we hit record, neither of us really get what you do, but we're here to learn just like all of our guests. We were very intrigued by your podcast pitch because it sounds mm-hmm. really unique and really interesting. So you're just going to have to start from the bottom up and just, Give us a full rundown of what you do. Okay. So a lot of my clients think of me as this electrician of the Mm -hmm. muscle system. And I can essentially work with people that have chronic issues, uh, things that have been lagging and bothering them for a long time. And then we have um, athletes who want to like galvanize their body against stress, against further injury or re-injury. So I take a really big picture of the mechanics of their muscular system. And for example, um, we, if somebody has like right hip pain, I don't address the stress at the right hip. I look at what could be causing that movement wise. And then sometimes we'll get more into the uh, multifactorial problems like, you know, toxic load, uh, stress, sleeping, breathing. Um, And then, you know, we start putting that whole picture together as far as how their muscular system tolerates life. When we have muscle tightness, that is a signal from our body that something either is not recovered or something is in a, a, a nervous system state of high alert. When we have tightness that pops up all over the body, we're, we have a system that's like the ADT systems from like the early 90s where you'd open a window and everything starts up. Uh, being at high alert and the alarm starts going off. Mm -hmm. So I deal with like nervous system fatigue um, and how that relates to muscle performance, muscle tightness, um, strength, endurance, oxygen uptake in the body, the metabolic, like how the body uses the muscles. So it's a really interesting way to look at injury basically. And so muscle activation techniques is the the certification that Mm -hmm. I've been dedicated to since I was a 24 year old retired soccer player. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, just like so many of us, it was like, this is the thing that helped me. I asked physical therapists, I'm like, why doesn't my knee straighten? You Mm -hmm. like, this is a problem. And they're like, well, you just stretch it. I'm like, "Mm, that that's not working. (laughs) So the MAT muscle activation techniques was the first thing that I found that was like, I have a solution. And I was like, I like this solution. I felt better within like two hours of, of a treatment. So I just kind of at 24, 25 years old, I just like stuck with that. And I've been, um, you know, on a, on a journey of, um, healing through the muscular system ever since. And it's, you know, I'm just so grateful because it's, I've built this like a, a 
fulfilling, fun uh, business that just like honors, you know, who I am and like how I can help people. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we embrace how weird we are. We embrace how different (laughs) it is. And um, there's not a lot of people who have been exposed to muscle activation techniques. Um, We also have some interesting fitness tools here. Um, you might be able to see in the back here, we have a pulley system that has like, 20... looks like a Smith machine to me. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Hi ladies. Um, <laughs> and that has 20 pulleys on it that eat that are one pound each. Mm-hmm. And so we do these little micro movements to activate the muscle and like teach our clients how to like activate their muscles basically. Because when I'm doing muscle activation techniques, I'm kind of doing it for them, like the electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. Like I go in, I know where the circuit board is. I know, and it's just an analogy. (laughs) I don't open anybody up. (laughs) Um, And and then um, I use a special like electrical stimulation device. Um, I use muscle testing. I use my manual therapy technique to, you know, open up these circuits and like create more strength with the movement patterns. Mm -hmm. So again, like back to that right hip person (laughs) that never finished. Mm -hmm. Um, they like, if a person has something going on in their right hip, I look at their feet. I look at their shoulder, their trunk rotation, what's putting stress onto that joint. What can't they do? And physical therapists will be like, I'm just going to work at that hip range to open up that hip range. And, you know, it has a time and place, but it, from what we under- see, um, it's very limited. So mm-hmm. we s- work outside of that conventional paradigm a hundred percent of the time. We're asking questions that are way outside that, um, scope. So I want you to take us through your assessment process a little bit, like when you get a client, right? So I have some upper glute tension. I do when my right glute where like I was just about to say the same thing what you, <laughs> the same spot <laughs> look at us look at us There's, when you're talking about right hip on. I'm like the hip like right above my right glute yeah and so you said you use muscle testing in a bunch of different things so take us through what like your initial assessment looks like how you're muscle testing people like obviously generally right you can't go through exactly what it is because it's very in person but I want everyone to get like a bit of a more specific feel for what you're doing Okay. So the first step is we try to collect data points on the movement of the whole body. Okay. So, um, the, our, our intake process, um, questionnaire wise, we are trying to look at the whole nervous system, Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the muscle tightness is sometimes a signal of, of, of poor habits basically and and poor environment. So we want to knock those out right away. I have those conversations pretty early on and I'm like, okay, this is, could be environmental. It could be, you know, so we definitely look at things that way. And then the, the next step is, um, looking at the, the, all the motion. So we try to segment how the pelvis moves versus the trunk. And can this person actually have control over moving the pelvis with a right hip high tightness, probably not. That hip, that pelvis probably rotated to one side and then the whole body makes adjustments around it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that doesn't is usually the eyes because we're, you know, hunter gatherer types up on two feet. So we got to keep our eyes on the horizon. So usually everything twists around that. So I kind of, I, I take a hard look at how do we untwist this and get it back to more of a like neutral position. So our first goal is pelvis neutral. And we look at three planes of the pelvis rotation, frontal plane, which is left to right, and then Mm -hmm. front to back, which is uh, we most people know it as a scoop or a tilt. And the tilt and the scoop become kind of our first goal. It's like, can we get them to scoop nice and evenly without using their knees, without using mm-hmm. their shoulders, without grinding their teeth? Can we get clean motion out of that pelvis? Can we get them to separate the trunk and the hip from that motion? 
usually with that upper right hip pain, uh, glute pain, we're going to see every time they move one of their knees, you're going to see the pelvis tilt. So we would probably start from the bottom down, looking at knee motion and heel motion, then hip motion and see if we can make that nice and even. So does the right knee and the left knee bend the same amount? Does it straighten the same amount? And no one person has, we just respect it as like, maybe they don't have the same as me. And um, we're very, we tell people we're very open-minded to like, everybody has a structural change, difference, right? So you have knee, um, so you might, and then we might look at the hips. Does this hip internally rotate the same as their right hip? Usually, no. It's, everybody has some kind of um, hip rotation asymmetry. And then we look at that as how do we get pelvis neutral? How do we get the pelvis to be in a more neutral state? And how many joints have also followed along in this? Uh, I call it the, I, my analogy is the, it's like a mafia. So they've got, you got the capo, you, and then you've got all these dudes running around committing crimes <laughs> for the capo. So like, usually the site of pain is not the capo. Yeah. Trickle down. Effect. <laughs> yeah. Like we're, we're looking for who's committing the crimes. Who's, who's, who's bribing, you know, who's, you know, who's in charge, like who's in charge of, you know, creating all this chaos. Mm -hmm. And um, then, and then we just start to peel back the layers. So in one session, we'll get pelvis neutral. Uh, so here at the studio, I have two different types of muscle testing. We can look at neuromuscular strength and fatigue. And then we can look at strength overall, which is technically called rate of force development. So one type of muscle testing the neuromuscular is useful because that tells us like essentially when the muscle would fatigue and then start calling in other muscles to, to do work and muscle work overall is like an orchestra. It's like the flutes, clarinets, the strings, they all have a little bit of volume and you know accents it'll you know accentuate at different times um and so muscles are you know they kind of they do that and they do you know work on hertz as well so it's a pretty good analogy i'd say um so we look for when that muscle would lose its ability to stay in the game so and then the strength test that we do is more like, like data. Um, so we have like special equipment. It's actually very small. It's a handheld. It looks like a stapler actually. And I put it on somebody's leg and I tell them to contract and I'm like, push, tell me, sh show me how much you got. And it's like five seconds of contracting. A lot of people cramp. It's, uh, it's, it's always an experiment to see, like it, it gives them, it gives me an insight into like, how much they're going to try, which is an interesting kind mm -hmm. of thing to get from your client. When you first meet them, you're like, you know, are you going to do what I ask you to do? And it's going to be uncomfortable. So, let, you know, try it. Mm -hmm. And so then we have really that gives us a, a story to tell data with. Um, it's like in, in functional testing, it would be like it would be like a GI test. Like it's 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 huge. Could really help. Um, and then a lot of times when people have that rotated pelvis, you'll see hamstrings stronger on one side, uh, quads <laughs> stronger on the other side, and it goes up and down the chain. So, um, if somebody is having, um, somebody came in for an assessment the other day with foot pain. And so I was, I wanted to test her hip flexors to see if, the foot pain was, you know, if this was up the chain, down the chain, if it was all over and we didn't see much of a difference, but we did see a difference on the back part of her body with the glutes and the hip extension. So mm -hmm. it's really fun. Um, every client is an experiment N of one and we get to ask questions and they get to be like, um, you know, test me, tell me what, tell me the story, like what's going on here. And 
we work with them to unravel it and give their body more opportunity to move with ease. Um, so after a session with us, people just feel more relaxed in their body. Very similar to when I first had my first parasite ex expulsion, I'd say. I was like, whoa, there's so much movement in here. Like, like I don't know how to, ex I, I tell my cell core story to everyone who will listen, which is so funny and I love it um, because it plagued me forever. Um, and <laughs> like, so um, I will, I will never forget that sensation I had. And it just felt like there was just more room and just, and yeah. So I think our clients kind of experience the same thing where their shoulders stack on top of their hips and they're like, am I straight? Is this right? And we're like, um, in a 3d sense, you're looking straight, you know? Um, and they, you know, and, and then we just kind of get them used to that new normal and introduce new stresses and, and stresses being exercises or back to life, you know? Um, that can be as simple as, oh my gosh, I'm so glad my four-year-old dragged me around the zoo. Like, I don't feel pain from that. I'm like, great. You know, now you can maybe add another, you know, hour of activity with them. Like, that's so cool. Or it's, you know, I have, uh, prof I, like co collegiate and professional athletes that work with me and, you know, we're talking about a livelihood. So, you know, we're talking about them really learning about their body and learning about their fatigue. Like I have a kid coming in later who has pain in the hip flexor when his foot lands on the ground, just one, <laughs> just the right side. And so we're going to work specifically on that pattern. And, you know, he's going to be able to play with or without me this weekend, but will he feel better? Will he recover better? Yeah. Like that's what we want. So it's such a fun job. <laughs> it sounds really fun. Um, I get dry needling done. How does that compare to dry needling? Um, dry needling is, um, it's, it's there, are, it's, it's a little arbitrary. So I'd say it doesn't compare because we're, we are always looking for data points. Mm -hmm. Whereas unless they're using ultrasound to guide the needles, then there's no, it is arbitrary. They're like, here's, here's a knot. And they just like knock on the door. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Are you there? And, like, <laughs> and um, sometimes if you've ever felt bad after um, like chiropractic adjustments, massage or dry needling, it's because they're releasing toxins into your system. Mm -hmm. And we all know that that can be a real doozy for some people. And right. Um, yeah. So it's the same thing with the dry needling. Um, those, those, um, knots can be like literally loads of toxins mm -hmm. um meaning like the muscle system block that off to protect it i mean right. you guys does this sound familiar and oh like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, well that's why why i like the way you described it you know that you're saying that you look at the whole picture because obviously you know that's what we do also and mm -hmm. so i like that it's you know not just one thing addressing the pain point you're mm -hmm. looking at the body as a whole yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, dry needling, if it, you know, if it unlocks that physical potential and you can work on other things and work on the movement, then it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Um, some people I, I, you know, unfortunately I know people that have been injured by dry needling and, um, one of my closest friends owns an acupuncture clinic. She will gladly pop off on that. Like she, you know, it's, it's very much like the ancient wisdom is not there. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's different wisdom. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, like for um, me personally, I like it in certain areas, yeah. like for the area that does affect me on my glute. If I do a lot of like hip release work with it, mm -hmm. and then I get the dry needling done, it feels really good for a really long time. And I don't notice it. Um, but my chiropractor does also do the myofascial release along mm -hmm. with it. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that that helps. Yeah. As well. No, it does need, it usually needs a secondary system to work mm -hmm. with it, which is, um, there's been new le legislation passed around the country that is going to just let people go into clinics and ask for dry needling, um, which is, could be good or which could be just, you know, um, could, could cause other problems. A disaster. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've talked about yeah. how mine, you need a doctor's note. 
in Delaware. Yeah. In the state of Delaware, they just you need a that. <laughs> Yeah, they just changed that in Virginia where you can you can just go and ask. Um oh, interesting. so yeah, so like a PT and I don't know if a PT before a PT needed to do it in Virginia. I think that might have changed too. They they're, they're kind of opening that whole thing up. Mm. So um yeah, I don't know how how it gets to that point, like how many people were lobbying for dry needling, but um, <laughs> there's so much know. better things we could lobby for. You know? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I I definitely wouldn't trust just anybody to do that to me. Like I, my chiropractor has been through a ton of training. So like mm-hmm. I fully trust her, but I would not, I would not just go to some random person and be like, Hey, yeah. dry needle me. Why yeah. Not? Yeah. Why not? Come mm-hmm. on. <laughs> I would go to Virginia and visit Jennifer first. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The um. Yeah. We can have a hot heel girl sesh. Um. We're down. Yeah. That's my. I my, already said I want the to hot heel girl you retreat. We will have Jennifer there too. Yes. And oh, muscle activate everyone. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll bring my. I'll bring my special electrical stim machine. Yeah. Whatever tools. Whatever tools you need to bring. <laughs> Yeah, so we got. Yeah, I've got lots of tools. There's so much <laughs> stuff here. I, my clients like make so much fun of me. Like they enjoy that I love the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we have hydrogen water sitting behind me, mm-hmm. and on Fridays, like we make sure everybody gets. We call it Fridro Day, <laughs> <laughs> and we make that. sure everybody gets hydrogen water. And they're like, "It tastes like water." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good." Get, get wet. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask a little bit about the nervous system. Obviously we know as a whole, right? Like we understand, or most people mm-hmm. who've been here, cause we talk about the nervous system plenty, if not listen to one of our prior podcasts, but talk to us about what it looks like if someone it's mostly nervous system related and not as much physical related. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's this wonderful movement in, uh, a, a branch of research called pain science, which is has the potential to change healthcare in this country, period. So pain science is just recognizing that the brain makes pain. So that's step one is that mm-hmm. we we when I start picking up on the cues that people are, are in a nervous system state of high sympathetic. Mm hmm. I, st- we, we have these little stories and analogies that are literally scripted <laughs> because we just say, look, like, you know, I use that ADT one a lot, actually. <laughs> I'm like, do you remember those alarm systems? I was like, that's your nervous system responding to everything. Um, there's another concept called the pain meeting. And so when you have pain, nine a- areas of your brain are activated and it's the same nine areas of your brain that are activated when you think about your um, dead grandmother mm. or your email apnea, you know, or whatever your boss is doing. Like if it's a high stress, painful thing to your brain, all those nine areas are activated. So you got a lot of resources going to this and that sucks. Like you need resources for other things. Mm-hmm. So we start with like little stories like that. When I start to recognize what, what it, that looks like, um, we start with, we do measure HRV. So, um, that will tell us right away. Um, I ask them about sleep. That's an also big red, you know, multiple red flags usually. (laughs) Um, and you know how men think it's just totally normal to wake up three times a night to pee. And, you know, and it's just like, seeing what their view is on their body. Mm. Like how many shots have you gotten this past three years? Like, I want to, like, I, like, what is your, what is your view? Like, how do you look at your body? And that, those are all things that give us clues and what it presents. Um, a lot of most shoulder pain in general is nervous system related, uh, especially if there was no traumatic injury. Cause a lot of people have that, um, neck pain, uh, very related to mouth breathing. Um, we work, you know, I, I work with airways and, and that kind of stuff. I work with a functional biological dentist. We have everything in Virginia. So I love that. (laughs) Um, and you know, so 
it, it, it is where their pain is, how often it comes, when it comes. So we try to help them create a new story. And so we're asking those, um, what are they called? like active listening? I'm like, okay, like, tell me when this happens. What is the timeline? If, if you're waking up with pain, you're probably not sleeping well. I don't care what position you're in. Like your body should be resting and doing other stuff like cleaning your body out. Well, you know, we know sleep is active, but mm -hmm. waking up with pain is a good sign that your nervous system is not, you know, in resonance with like living a calm, like helpful, calm, productive life. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, HRV is the main one. Um, breathing, we do a buteco test. It's like a minute, right? <laughs> You're like, you know, breathe in like, and, and how, how long does it take you to expel? And, you know, you just see their tolerance, their CO2 tolerance. And those two things are like the most, um, you know, uh, obvious. And then there's, um, different body metrics that also might be, um, you know, helpful. So if I see on their list that they're taking, um, proton inhibitors, you know, I go right to it. I'm like, well, look, have you heard of, you know, uh, stomach acid? Like, and you know, what is your <laughs> thoughts on that? You know? And so I, you know, I just assume everybody's, uh, unless they specifically come, it's more likely that they have a high state of sympathetic. Um, and then one of my questions on my intake is like, have you considered how stress affects your exercise? Mm. And if they say yes, like I have a good entry point to be like, okay, well, how, what do you, what does that mean to you? And, and some people might say like, I just don't recover that well after I have a few cocktails. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, they're thinking good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I, yeah. So it's, it's definitely, I think the short answer, it's multi, we take a multifactorial approach and we yeah. also talk about, you know, the psychology of it. And I have a, I give them a pain science quiz and it's like six questions and I just see where their pain love pain intellectual is. And, mm -hmm. um, and I just think I'm just such a big warrior for pain science. I think it has the potential to eradicate the need, uh, the, overuse of opioids and it's just 100 huge yeah mm -hmm. so your brain makes pain <laughs> is the number one thing <laughs> absolutely it does pain's all perception right it's literally all in the brain like it's all perception as much as no one wants to hear that it's yeah how your body's perceiving a certain yeah. stimulus and so on tissue and so forth. yeah and tissue injury is real too mm -hmm. <laughs> um of course but the body can heal. Um, and so if you have tissue pain after six months, um, that is un irrational. Um, you know, that that's a sign that there might be something more to it with your perception. Um, I think it's I think it's OK to have a little bit of pain in your oh, in your ankle after you start running again. That's that's to be expected, but can your nervous system recover? That's, that's the question. And the answer is no, if you're, if you're in high sympathetic all the time. So that's one of the first things, the first phases of our treatment process is ed educating on that. And sometimes it takes a while. Um, and then also getting their body open to change. So it's probably the equivalent of opening the pathways. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really like, uh, can can your body, can your nervous system have flexibility between parasympathetic mm -hmm. and sympathetic? And we just talk about HRV and, you know, that that's, yeah, huge component. How do you get them to track their HRV? I don't, I have tools to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So, and I also, the electrical stim device that I have is called a new X N E U X. And that has a, a setting that has, um, that basically puts the body in parasympathetic. Like they don't have a choice once I press that button. Well, I love that. Yeah, I was actually going to ask a little <laughs> bit about how you get people to write, like heal their nervous system, because that's a whole kit and caboodle right there. It's a 
process mm-hmm. for some people. Yeah, yeah. I look at it as sometimes we can get the physical um, body to, you know, start moving in that direction. And then that opens up their mind. Mm-hmm. Cause like I said, pain, it activates nine areas of the brain. So it takes a lot of resources. And so some people don't have the capability to create a new story. Mentally, the bandwidth isn't there. Um, so, you know, we try to help with the physical component so that the mental bandwidth can open up. Mm-hmm. So we recognize that there's stages like that and it is back and forth. And sometimes it's woo woo. And sometimes it's very physical, like opening up the pathways. And sometimes it's you know, more mechanical, like do the lunge better, um, do less of them, (laughs) you know, like don't throw your weight around, um, in the gym. Um, and you know, so yeah, it has, you know, different stages to it. So I think, but also like showing them that state of calm and what the nerve, what the muscles will feel like when they're not wrenching on you and they're not in that mode, then, um, you know, that just opens up their mind to possibility. And so when we start working with people, we have a, we give them a three week program and they come in twice a week and they usually experience change within that. They feel different within that three weeks. So once they have the taste of it, if, if, if they decide that for some reason they are too lazy to keep that going um okay great but if they also if they take that moment to reflect and say oh what can i change um you know we start with hydration and (laughs) you know we start with some basics Mm -hmm. and then i get them over to someone if, if they have questions like we network with people to make sure that i have an intro to make to people and help them heal whatever part they need to. Um, a lot of times what's interesting though, because this muscle work is so effective that, um, the muscle, so the muscle work is so effective. It takes away that muscle protective mechanism. So within a week, once we take that away and they start receiving the treatments, they start getting nerve symptoms. And I'm like, well, guess what? Your nervous system is an alarm system and it doesn't have resources. And I like, I like stock body bio, like electro Elite. <laughs> and by the way, I am a person who likes the taste. I will drink Elite with just water <laughs> every <Sorry>. morning, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I am Sorry, you're person. not speaking our language. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, light, but it must be all this activation she's doing over here. It just yeah, yeah. powers Clearly her. We into need whatever, cells. whatever you're having, we need. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do the e light first thing in the morning. I'm like, <sighs> it's like, so good. Yeah. And but flavor wise, um, not, but good for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nobody's taking me up on it. Um, no, we do. <laughs> and I'll, I'll stock it because, like, it's a starting point. Hydration is a huge mm-hmm. starting point for people. And um, so, you know, once those nerve symptoms pop up, um, I start prescribing nerve flosses, which are an exercise that, that work with the interface of the nerve. And they're great. They're kind of like stretches, but they're not. And then, um, then we start talking about what could impact nerve pain. And it's like, you know, everything. (laughs) So that, that gets the, my, 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 um, that's when I start sending them podcasts. I'm like, look, I talked to this person who does micronutrient testing. Why don't, this is a good thing. And if they invest 45 minutes to an hour listening to that conversation and then have a question, that's when the door really opens. You know, Mm -hmm. that was the origin of my whole podcast, to be honest with you. Cause like, I didn't have the time or the knowledge to change people, right? Or cha- or encourage them to change. Mm-hmm. But I did know so many people that did, and I want that knowledge in their hands. And I, I, and if they don't need me anymore, great. Like, time to look at the gut. Like, we have. There's, you know, here's the network. Here are the people, and that I, that means the world to me when they really you know, embrace that. But I also have seen the opposite where they, (laughs) 
you get like um i don't know you like doctor google everything mm. or i don't know what the equivalent of a decent search engine is but like <laughs> I no, guess you're I, on, I always say doctor google you yeah <laughs> you're on bit shoot looking at every every theory <laughs> and like i need all the things and you know so um we definitely encourage the balance between those two yeah i always say instagram university for some people right like that's, that's what uh, i was thinking yeah yeah instagram <laughs> university man and it's not influencer exactly overload yeah influencer overload yes my fiance has influencer overload <laughs> <laughs> but he might come around my well, husband's always sending me these like health posts and stuff and i'm like okay why don't you implement them though they're literally what I'm telling you to do, but you're not oh, implementing them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have. Yeah. My, yes. My fiance is worried about his belly fat, which is barely not there, but you know, I'm like, Oh, he's like, what do you think? I'm like, tape your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> literally told my husband that two weeks ago. <laughs> no. I'm he like, does. okay, well you're, you're not going to change then. <laughs> Yeah, he he does it. every once in a while, and I gotta tell you, it is the funniest shit. In the and when he tries to start talking to me with the tape on, I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> and he'll wake up and he'll be like, huh? <laughs> I woke up with my mouth tape on my leg this morning, so it was the <laughs> whole time. I was like, mm, okay, that's nice of me. <laughs> Better that than I guess in your hair. It's happened like, in my yeah. hair before. <laughs> I've had it literally wrapped in my hair. I've had it on my eye mask. I've had <laughs> it on my cheek. It just like goes <laughs> everywhere sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, Instagram overload. Yes. Yeah. He's he's definitely on that team. <laughs> it happens but... to the best of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my 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 recent scroll. I'm like obsessed with chat GPT. I'm like. Tell me everything, Instagram, <laughs> about chat PT, about the other machine. <laughs> I yeah. ended up on Jonas Brothers TikTok. So, I, you know, the the rabbit hole goes on forever. Oh, yeah. They're easy how? to look at. I know. Yeah. I was like, how did I end up on Jonas Brothers TikTok? I don't know. But now I think they're hilarious. <laughs> um. Okay. So away from Jonas Brothers, we don't need to talk about them. But I want to know your thoughts about CrossFit. Oh, yeah, it's a sport. <laughs> Treat it like a sport. Yeah. I'm not going to uh, lie, that reaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So many people ask me that. Um, yeah, it's a sport. You know, it's disorganized. Um, it is, yeah, if you want to guess how you're working out, and like if you just want to randomly work out shit, like go for it, I guess. But don't expect it to be logical or helpful. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting. I think I think one interesting about cross thing about CrossFit, it's like promoted well muscled women. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, it's changed like the view on an athletic body, mm -hmm. and I know from like working with a lot of teenagers that that is really good. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think um, seeing mainstream. I guess somewhat mainstream athletic bodies is really good for like our young population. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but beyond that, yeah, I don't have much respect for it. <laughs> I think the other side of that for women too, though, is I see so many where they're just absolutely burnt out from doing yes. CrossFit because yes. it's so intense, especially from coming from <sighs> like a hormonal aspect of it. They just like, you're trying to keep up with the guys constantly and it's yeah. just go, go, go. And it's just, you know, like it's constant Ugh. stress on the body, which yeah, as you know, in turn affects the hormones. So yeah. Intense extra high intensity exercise. If you're going to do it on a regular basis, it's, it's good for maintenance of a body composition or maintenance of a fitness level. But when people try to use it to get there, mm. I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not with it. Um, you know, yeah. I think if CrossFit athletes just did it like seven months of the year, they'd be better. Off. <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're going to, yeah. Like take a season off, like take a, mm -hmm. it's so incredibly intense and it's yeah. just there. I mean, when you buy into it, you're programmed to think it needs to be so intense all the time. And that's where I've taken like a class or two because my ex 
super into CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was in the time where I was healing my gut issues. And I was like, this is not for me right now. Like I literally will shit my pants after class because I can't do high intensity exercise right now. Cause it's driving my cortisol up and like, it just wasn't it. And I was fully aware of what it was doing. And he was like, but you'd really like it. You're competitive. I'm like, that's the problem, right? The problem <laughs> is I'm competitive and I probably would enjoy it, but my body cannot handle it right now. Like mm -hmm. I was very aware of that, but a lot of people aren't. A lot of people yeah. are, are there, are in the whole mindset of like, they love the community, right? That's great. We love a community. It gets mm. a little toxic when you think you have to push yourself all the time and compete with people all the time and that the high int higher intensity, the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. I'll never forget this one girl. Um, and she's like, well, I do this. And she's showing me the exercises and the barbell overhead and this and that. And she's going through like when she has the pain, I was like, she, you know, and it's here and it's there. And I'm like, she was like, so, you know, I'm doing CrossFit like five days a week and this and that. I was like, that's why your joints don't work. And she just stopped and stared at me. I was like, oh, there's no filter there on that one. And like, I wouldn't, I never really tell people that. Like, I don't, yeah. I, I don't, but I couldn't help it with this one. I was like, whoa, this isn't, uh, yeah. So I actually don't work with a lot of CrossFit people because they, the nervous system is not going to open up for me unless they stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of, I do tell them that on the first like conversation. Yeah. Um, and you know, and, or yeah. And even if they're in rehab, they don't usually come to someone like me because I'm not aligned to CrossFit. They're like way into that, you know, group thing and kind of stuff. And, you know, um, and it's also funny because yeah, when people ask me, because I've I've got I've got quite a body body, and like some people will ask me if I do CrossFit, and I'm like, no, I was a competitive competitive athlete. I don't need to compete in my exercise. Like I'm good. Like I enjoy my exercise. Mm -hmm. They're like, huh? And I'm like, yeah. Like you don't see many like, you know, yeah. Like I work with like a lot of people that end up working with me are usually kind of like me. They were competitive, and the sport beat them up. And they don't mm -hmm. want that again, <laughs> you know, if, or if they did, they tried CrossFit for like three months and, you know, it was fine. Um, but then they're like, nah, like the same for me. Like, mm -hmm. don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what is your, your favorite form of exercise? Um, Just for like you personally, because you said you, you enjoy working out. Yeah. I, I love, I love some, I love some machines. I love some weightlifting machines. I love, uh, I, I love being precise. Come on over. Um, and I love being precise. I, I love feeling a pump. So I'm closer to a bodybuilder than anything. <laughs> like I just like love like the muscle warming and the tension building. I think it's, I think it's amazing. So I just, I, I, I look, I, I go in my body sometimes when I'm strength training and that gives me great, great results. Um, I have old knee injuries. I have um, torn my ACLs multiple times mm. and, you know, that goes back to, <laughs> um, you know, my gut actually, to be honest, you know, if I, if I really, and I tell people my story about that, like I had a low tolerance for my body because of um, the glyphosate, glyphosate that I was exposed to as a child. And, you know, it threw me off for years, um, multiple ways. And yeah, so anyway, and birth control, um, too young or mm. at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. So I, I make sure that my exercise is aligned to what my body has available. And so that takes a self-knowledge that isn't just given to us. We have to work at it. And so, that. yeah. So self-knowledge for working out. Is that, my, is that my water? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and the self-knowledge to know what is available in the body and what your body is capable of. Um, so that, that I use all the time. I've just started my, my dog is 14 months old and uh, he's, he's a handsome fella. 
And um, <laughs> I think he could be an Abercrombie model. That's my oh. idea. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I want pictures <laughs> after this. And he, um, and so, uh, and he's a retriever. So um, we're doing some work together. So I've started running with him a little bit and it's just the best. And so that's not something I was doing before. I'm not like into running, but if it's, if it's with him, I'm, it's, it, it's a different like connection. So mm -hmm. I get into that with him and, um, what else do I do for exercise? I do a lot of sauna. <laughs> I, love I count that. that as exercise. <laughs> we love it that. It makes exercise in the body. So yeah. it really yeah. is. Yeah. And, and what else? Um, all right. Bye. Uh, I also do, I do some cold exposure. I count that as exercise. Um, what else do I do? Oh, Pilates. Of course. I love Pilates. <laughs> Can't forget I, that. I think one of the things that you touched upon that I think is we also touch upon, but so foundational for people, like you got to do what your body's asking for and also what you like, like, right. Yeah. A lot of yes. people frame exercise mm -hmm. too much to be like punishment to get yes. your body to a certain place, but there are literally hundreds of different types of exercises out there. Like do something you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just, yeah. What are you willing to do? Exactly. And yep. if that is like VR headset running around in your <laughs> screen room, I've been that. great. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it is something a more complex and sophisticated, um, great. You know, um, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. So as long as, like, I think yoga is a good example. Like everybody thinks they should be doing yoga. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's built for that. Um, it's not just good. You know, it's not like good at just because it's yoga and every, and there's a yoga studio on every corner. Um, yoga is good if you have the available range to go into positions or have the knowledge to stop yourself before mm -hmm. going too far. Um, so as gentle as it may seem, people get hurt doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, same with running. It's such a go-to thing. They're like, oh, I'm just going to start running. Okay. Like when was the last time you did that as a hobby? Cause it's more, it, you know, it's a hobby. If you're doing, um, I always tell people, uh, you know, when they are, have that, like, where do I start kind of thing? I'm like, well, a healthy human should be doing about 200 to 300 minutes a week, you know, and it, and less, less than 200 closer to 100 if it's high intensity maybe in 75 minutes. So I frame it in minutes for people. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the more intense that is, the less minutes it is. So we have a client that wants to, he's new. He just finished his three week thing and he wants to lose weight. Um, but he has no context for what is good for him or what he's, he's like, my dream is to run again. I want to run again. Okay. Well, you know, you can do, you know, 150 minutes of walking a week you know, and then a small block of that, you can start to jog. And then, you know, you add 5%, like, and that's it. Um, if you're willing to lift weights, bang for buck, the smartest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. It's the safest. It's, it's just, <laughs> if you're willing to do it the right way, um, the controlled way. And if, if you are willing to do that, great. But um, some people just aren't willing to do it. And I'm not going to be the one to be like that. That has to be the thing. That is the thing. It's just there's too many binary thought processes in health and wellness. And one of my one of my favorite uh, stances to take is there's so many flavors to exercise. You know, you don't have one is not better than the other. And it's based on your preference. It's just mm -hmm. not. Yeah. I love all of that. I know. <laughs> Me too. I um also like that, right? Like for someone who they want to run, that's great. But so many people think they have to run, right? Mm -hmm. They think that that's like the key to getting your six pack. And I'm like, well, do you like it? Because I know so many people in my life, I used to love running. I I love a runner's high. Some people don't get runner's highs and they're just like, well, it's a means to an end. And I'm like, well, if you hate it, stop doing it. Like, mm -hmm. why, are, why are you going to spend 30 minutes running? when you're miserable for 30 whole minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's lame. 
Like, yeah, for me, it'll, it'll, I'll have to like coax myself into it at first and then I'll get there. And then I'll be like, this is great. This song rocks. Like I could run forever and it never lasts forever. I'm, I'd run for like two miles at a yeah. time. Let's be real. I was <laughs> never a runner runner, <laughs> but like it's, you don't have to put yourself in a box. Yes. Yes. And I think uh, other, the other thing that people get wrapped up in is like, this is what my body used to do kind of story. Mm. And, mm-hmm. you know, the remake is never as bad, as bad, good as the original. That's it. You know, like <laughs> I like that. Right. Like, like make a new story, create something new. Um, You know, I also this is really crazy. So some of my clients, uh, my one of my hobbies is astrology. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and um, so some of my clients, I'm like, so what do you think I should do? I'm like, can I open your chart? <laughs> Oh, I love that. And then we start talking about stuff that they love and that they like to do. And because it's in there, if you've ever had a reading and um, and then they and then we come up with something because I get to see inside a little bit more personality wise and family wise. It's all kind of in there. And and then it becomes something different. Like it's not like, well, I used to be a dancer, so I'm going to do Zumba. Um, but didn't you hate your body when you were dancing? Like, didn't you look in the mirror and just like hate choreographers and your body? Like that doesn't have to be it. And they're like, but that was when I was in my best shape and maybe you haven't had your best shape yet. And, you know, it's just like a whole back and forth of that. And sometimes, um, yeah, I'll just stop what I'm doing treatment wise and I'll be like, okay, let's talk. You know, that's a really good thing to zero in on because, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. Um, and if you force yourself to do it, you're not going to get the results um, or anything measurable that's in. I mean, there's arguments. There's always arguments to this one. But because um, like bodybuilders like force down the food, right? Like they yeah. force down the calories. They get the muscle building. Um, so that's and that's a different kind of goal, like forcing it. Um, it's the same with that CrossFit, like you're forcing it. So. I don't know. You might get that three month, four month gain that and but I don't know, like hot heel girl, like, no, like you want longevity, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm 40 years old and I want to look like this for another 15 years <laughs> or longer, you know? Yeah. Why not? Why not go for longer? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. What's we'll, be, we'll be hot healed forever. <laughs> yeah. Hot- <laughs> yeah. But no not like Mark here. Hyman. Like, <laughs> not quite that extreme yeah he's like turned into a ghost he's like everybody live and (laughs) and i'm like i can't like oh yeah dave asprey dave asprey has actually turned into a ghost too sorry yeah not to throw out names i'm sorry if you enjoy these people (laughs) the last time i saw him i was like that's not dave that can't be dave that's what i said i literally saw him and i was like no way that's Mm -hmm. a lie Mm -hmm. but it was old as time. Yeah. Oh my god. I think there's there's a point when you get to a little too much biohacking. Yeah. Too much yeah. MCT oil in your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I definitely. You don't see that too much where I live. I'm in the D.C. area, and people are just so addicted to stress and alcohol here that high <laughs> biohacking. You. you know what I mean? Like it just like doesn't. It, you don't see. Like, yeah, that's just not a thing around here. Um, every, if, if it, if it is, they've already moved out to Virginia and bought a farm and like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, like on their little pasture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, it's just such a high, yeah. Everybody's addicted to the gossip and the stress around here. It's kind of a, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many people are addicted to stress. Yeah. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. Crossfitters are addicted to stress, right? Yes. They get that high and that's the stress. And I'm not hating on crossfitters, but that's just a seam right now. <laughs> I was, that's, I, the, all the hit workouts, all the 5am workouts, like, come on, Courtney, like you were addicted to stress. You were addicted to the, the five to nine before your nine to five. And uh-huh. then another five to nine after where all I did was try and build a business on the side. Like relaxation didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a little guilty of that. Um, but 
I've all, yeah, I heard someone say, yeah, I go to the gym to feel something. I like the pain. I heard somebody say that somebody said that right across the table from the other day. I was Ooh. like, oh, tell me more about this crazy life you live. And like, <laughs> she had some stories. Um, mm. She had some really crazy stories. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, like there's so many people on social media where, where they're like, if you're not in pain, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And I'm like, that's not why I lift. I do not live to feel pain. Let's be real. I can feel pain in a lot of other ways. And I just don't want to. <laughs> life yeah. is painful enough let's be honest <laughs> and I think from my perspective too I'm like I've had too many stressors in my life too many acute things too many chronic things that went on like I'm okay with things not feeling super super stressful and hard right now like mm-hmm. in my workouts because mm-hmm. I can control it there was a point in time when I couldn't control it you know like I was in pain yeah. on the inside I'm like it's okay to not want that anymore which I feel mm-hmm. like no one says I'm like it's okay to not want that stressful pushing your body to failure sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've seen some people talk about just like recovering from, yeah, they have that like, you know, idea about recovering from burnout, but they Mm. don't talk about like, uh, like allow yourself, give that permission to say, Mm -hmm. oh, I want things to be easy. And like really say it and mean it to yourself like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause like, I've definitely had some, you know, spiritual moments with my gut healing, like, and literally some of my constipation was, you know, holding on to some old stuff, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I need, yeah, I needed that first, you know, <laughs> push through of, you know, getting things loose and, mm-hmm. You know, for me, um, yeah, no, like the whole cell cord thing, like totally changed my life. So, yeah. So, and I needed that logic. I needed that science. I needed that elegant science that they have, you know, but, at, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, am I allowing myself to move through this? You know, um, and, you know, the answer was no, I was not, you know, yeah. I was, I was pushing myself. Um, I have a lot of drive. I have never worked for anyone. I've always been a business owner and, you know, I've just never I've been apologetic about my ambition. And then I was like, oh, that's the downside, you know, is like not, <laughs> not allowing myself to process things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. physical, very real physical things. Yeah. That manifests in constipation all the time. I've had so many clients over the past couple of weeks and months that are like, oh, where, how did I get constipated again? Out of nowhere. Like we're working on stuff. And I'm like, I'm just going to pose you with this question first, before I start with hydration and movement, right? Hydration and movement. And are you eating enough food? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, are you holding on to something in your life? Mm-hmm. Emotionally, physically, like, is there something that you are white knuckling your way through that you don't want to let go of? And everyone's like, it's funny you say that. And I'm like, yeah, cause this stuff doesn't just pop out, pop out of nowhere. Like it's mm-hmm. coming from somewhere. And the same thing happened to me. Everything that happens to my clients always manifests in my body, which I hate <laughs> about me. I need to clearly cross some boundaries, but, um, uh, it happened to me literally th- three weeks ago. And I was like, God damn, I'm constipated. Like this was, I was on the opposite side of the spectrum. What is this? And I was just like white knuckling my way through things. Like, and I knew it. And someone's like, oh, you could try this gut healing supplement. And I was like, this is 90% emotional and I'm fully aware of it. Like I just got to let go of something. But like most people don't even think about that. They're like, okay, I have to do another parasite cleanse. I'm still constipated, right? Is it SIBO? Is it candida? What is it? And I'm like, or you can let go of some stuff. (laughs) Yeah. That's the hardest thing to do though. It's easier to take a supplement. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure you run into that all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's the same thing for you, right? Like if you're helping people with their nervous system, it's the hardest thing for them to go home and do the homework and actually heal their nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot easier to just show up and have you do some exercises and tell them Mm -hmm. to do some exercises instead of addressing the mess in their head or addressing the mess in their life or addressing that they're addicted to cortisol and stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Yeah. They always want to know what's the next thing I can do physically. Yep. And sometimes it's just, um, go to bed a little earlier, <laughs> you know, it's like, 
that's the next next <laughs> physical real. thing you can do you know turn turn it down <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. no one wants yes. to hear that they're like what else and you're like <laughs> Start they're like there. what can I take what can I buy and take that will fix it yeah <laughs> not, not yeah. what can I do mm. yeah what uh what radical self-responsibility can I take today <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna look myself in the mirror today and change my life <laughs> everyone, uh, yeah. everyone wants the free things until the free things are just too much work and mm. then they're like I'll pay however much money I need to, to just not work on myself. Yeah, I have, uh, I, yeah, I, so we have, okay. So we do advertising for our three week program once a month and we call mm-hmm. it the hotline because mm-hmm. people like call in after seeing the ad and, and it's just amazing because we are, we're purposefully, we're trained in sales now, which has been like, a weird crazy thing to do but by the way um and we're trained to be like okay so you know what else have you done like really trying to like dig into like how much money they've spent trying to solve their problems Mm -hmm. and i'm like wow they've done everything but you know like some of the most basic stuff Mm -hmm. like this new Mm -hmm. like m sculpt thing that's out there oh my god it like tones the body with electrical impedance, which can be done, which is fine. Mm-hmm. It can be done. Science is there. But the amount of money that people spend on it, I'm like, man, you, like anything but that. Anything but strength training. Like, uh, yeah, or I any, a, yeah. I have a place local to me that does that. And I looked at the prices and I'm like, yeah. And then I have people that turn me down, but they'll go do that. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's my point. You know, yeah. like nine hundred dollars for a twenty-minute session to do this, but they will not pay to work with me for a month. Yeah, but people just don't want to look their own BS in the face. That's the truth. I've been talking to a lot of people about that. I'm like, no one's not no one. Sorry, a lot of people out there don't want to look their BS in the face and face it and change it and change their life, right? Because there's the what if. What happens if I change my life? What does it look like? How are things going to change? What about my relationships? And like that's mm. the cost of getting truly healthy mm-hmm. changing yeah. your life but it's in a good way right they just don't see it that way yeah speaking of are you guys my new friends because like i don't have absolutely. any friends anymore yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, that's hello. why we created the podcast <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> like, yeah because i stopped drinking oh my god that's <laughs> totally thrown it out yeah oh yeah oh yeah it changes <laughs> everything yeah i, I met a I... dog mom the other day and i was like oh, oh my god I have a friend. <laughs> you're like we're gonna bond over our dogs we don't need a drink just dog time yeah mm-hmm. that's how people with kids make friends they just bond over it's true having children yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no not drinking changes things and i've actually met some people who doesn't change things for they're like no my friends just like we they'll invite me to things when they're not drinking. I'm like, wow, we had different people in our lives because these people didn't invite me unless they were, unless they were drinking. So that's okay. Yeah, we're all different. Yeah, uh, yeah. People stopped inviting me before the drinks, though. I don't know. <laughs> Friendships are they're hard. not your people. Yeah, they're not my people. Um, <laughs> yeah, there were other things, other opinions. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> You're like, Anyways. I told them CrossFit sucked too many times. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> okay. Do you have any last notes you want everyone here to know? Is there any like one point you want to hit home? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like the main thing is that there's a lot of nuance and self-care. And that goes for exercise as well and like the the injury care paradigm. So I think like the more that we embrace nuance, the better questions we ask. I think there's just, I mean, I, I think I think all things can be right and nothing is correct at the same time. And I think that kind of mindset with self-care and healing is 
probably the most helpful besides. So I just tell people to stay away from the internet gurus. Um, and if somebody just is so adamant about like one thing being the, the thing, and it's possible for like, uh, you know, you stretch your psoas and all your problems go away. Like if that, like, that's the kind of stuff that I just, I encourage everybody to turn away from. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, but you know, cringe scrolls are fine, but doom scrolls are fine <laughs> for a, for a little bit, but that's all I think they're worth. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> nuance is the thing, <laughs> the name of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, this episode was really good. I really enjoyed it because I felt like, I felt like I was just listening to a podcast episode, honestly, Good. but now we get to share it with everyone else. So <laughs> cool. That'll be well, really great. Um, yeah. I'm about to come to Virginia and let you like muscle activate me. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's not that far from Virginia M. 95. You. Delaware. Yeah, 95 <laughs> Delaware. all the way to Delaware. <laughs> the Delaware. The, yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. My vision honestly is like, a facility that people can come and try this kind of stuff and just have a, you know, full experience and, and, and exp like kind of experiment on their body with the tools that we use. That's my vision. Um, and also to, um, have Gwyneth Paltrow also be involved at some point. <laughs> That would be amazing. She's if she could, school right now, she's yeah. in court case. <laughs> no, if she could I think she's me, done now. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. So, just be. putting it out there. If you want to goof me, go for well, it. In, in <laughs> case Gwyneth Paltrow ever listens to our <laughs> podcast, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Elle McPherson too. She's got a cool platform these days. She's doing some interesting stuff. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. All right. Um, well, I know you're in Virginia, so yep. if anyone wants to, you know, go visit you and have this done in person, you yep. are, you have a physical location there, correct? Yes. Alexandria, Virginia, uh, impactyourfitness.net and Jennifer Simone Schwartz.com and thinkfitbefitpodcast.com. And yeah, we're just about to kick off uh, a new show and a new season. Ooh. So yeah. So the new show is a solo cast with me. So it's going to be um, me either telling you about my own experiences or some of the cool stuff that I like, like tendons and circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. they're, they're circadian rhythm uh, organs. So when people have tendonitis, like you need to sleep better, period. Like I love telling people that they're like, what? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyways, don't ice it. Actually go to sleep. <laughs> um sleep fixes everything. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, that's what I'm up to. That's where you can find me. Instagram, Jennifer underscore Simone underscore Schwartz. And I am there all the time with my dog or working out or getting in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Awesome. And we'll leave all that in the show notes also. Sweet. So thank you so much, Jennifer. This was yeah. so much fun. And hopefully I can't wait we to share will, it. Yes. Not we will keep keep the connections going. Yes. I'd love to have you all on my podcast. That would be awesome. Yeah. We're down. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll catch you guys in the next episode.